All right, welcome everyone to our July Michigan Financial Wellness Network partner meeting or coffee chat. Uh, this is Kelly Masters and I'm very pleased to have everyone here. And if you're listening to the on-demand recording, um, it has been edited by the time it's loaded to our YouTube channel so that um, I try and cut out anything that isn't um, salient or on point. So uh, first thing I want to bring to everyone's attention is we had a meeting scheduled. Um, I'm sorry, this is June. Yeah, this is our June meeting. Um, we had a meeting scheduled for July, um, but that is not going to work. In fact, I, I couldn't really find a, any date in July because of um, demands of my schedule and the holiday. And so we're just gonna take a bye month in July and we will come together the next time at our um, currently scheduled August 10th meeting. So I wanna make sure that that, is, um, that change is noted for everyone uh, to update their calendars. Um, certainly I'm available uh, all the time in between meetings, so that doesn't change. Um, just uh, we're not going to have a formal partner uh, gathering in the month of July. So with that, um, let's go ahead and do a few updates. So uh, I just want to raise awareness again to everyone that we do have um, a whole branding package available and the graphics are available on our website. So if you go to myfinancialwellness.org, which is mifinancialwellness.org, on the partners page, you will find all of the graphics available, including um, this uh, QR code. So if you want to use that QR code and folks were to scan it, it would take them to our myfinancialwellness.org website. So um, please note that these are uh, new as of when we launched this you know, new initiative, um, probably since January. Um, so these are available 24 seven for download from our website and um, also the QR code, which I'm not sure everyone realized we had. So I just wanted to raise awareness for those resources. And if you are here as a guest, be sure that you are a subscribed or registered partner so that you get our, our monthly updates. Um, thanks again to our ongoing uh, generous supporters that make this statewide initiative possible. Um, Ally Financial, uh, Michigan's Credit Unions, Raymond James, and specifically Anthem Advisors, um, MESP, and MET, who we heard from in last month's meeting. If you didn't attend our May partner meeting, I encourage you to tune in and watch it um, on demand from our YouTube channel. Um, it was a great presentation uh, given by uh, MET and MESP, um, both good information for us as individuals, but certainly as professionals, so that I'm trying to build our um, collective um, capacity and our knowledge base of all of our resources. And so there's a great presentation in there from Diane, um, who spent the morning with us and gave us kind of the, the five things you need to know about our college uh, state savings programs. Um, thanks again to Oakland County Michigan Works. And this morning, our guest presenter is Linda Keough, who many of you know from her um, work with our group and with the county. And she's going to share some of her lessons learned um, in creating and sustaining a financial literacy program. Thanks to JP Studinger Group, as well as our fiscal agent, Michigan Council on Economic Education, um, who behind the scenes um, has been instrumental in allowing me to do what it is that we do. So um, I moved the to-do list to the beginning of our meeting because I think sometimes by the end of the meeting, folks are moving on with their day and um, this may get uh, pushed aside or forgotten. So um, if you are interested in collaborating with other organizations, 
please be sure your contact information is in the partner collaboration form, which is the Google form. And I share that link in every monthly e-newsletter. Um, I've moved all of the useful links to the bottom of the newsletter so that it isn't cluttered. The current or uh, new information is at the top of those monthly newsletters. I don't know if you all noticed that, but I've reorganized the information, but I didn't wanna delete much of the useful um, information because I realized not everyone has bookmarked certain links or know where the forms are. So, um, but those are in those monthly e-news blasts that I'm sending out. You just have to scroll down to the bottom where I have useful links and resources at the end. Also, um, I am continuing to use our Facebook and Twitter pages specifically right now to help promote um, events that are happening um, beyond our April uh, Financial Literacy Month and Michigan Financial Wellness Month. So um, please do like and follow our pages and then please retweet or share posts that you find of value. Um, and since still right now, most of our programs are taking place remotely, um, you know, you can share those resources with your constituents and your community. For example, um, we had three events, we still have three events taking place this week alone. And um, so I put together um, a, a singular post from those three events and shared it in some of the community groups that I belong to here, um, kind of on the, the Western border of Southeast Michigan. Um, just to, again, you know, raise awareness of the work that this group is doing and help um, hopefully drive, you know, uh, participation in those, in those events. So um, we are on Facebook and Twitter, My Financial Wellness on Facebook and My MyFinWellNet on Twitter. Um, and then also, uh, speaking of events, we are continuing to update our website, the programs page. I am continuing to add events uh, throughout the year. So again, back in October, November, this group decided that we were a year round organization and that the needs existed and the resources were necessary beyond April. And so um, that event page, I am currently updating with um, events for June, July, and soon to include August. And um, I know that uh, a couple of our organizations have some ongoing non-solicitous open to the public um, events and programs. So I would love to include those both on our webpage, but then also I use that information from the webpage to do posts in our social media. So it's kind of a twofer. If you add your information to the Google form, then I can take it and put it on our collective webpage and then glean from that things to post on our social media. So that is happening. Um, so um, Northwest Community Action Agency, I think often has ongoing programs as well as a variety of others. So please, um, uh, add your summer events into that Google form so that we can help make people aware that those, um, those resources are happening. And for those who were not aware of the impact our collective work had uh, for April, we had really great success not knowing going in what it would look like, but our Money Smart Kids Read program, we were able to distribute actually and had requests beyond what we, beyond the inventory, um, 7,600 custom copies of this year's chosen books utilized by over 120 libraries. We had the Michigan Lieutenant Governor um, Garland Gilchrist as a, a guest reader. And in fact, that um, recording is still available on our YouTube channel. So um, if anyone wants to utilize our Lieutenant Governor um, reading this year's book uh, in other programs now through the summer because the publisher has extended the open use um, extend, um, uh, uh, option through September. Because of the pandemic, they are allowing us to have this pre-recorded reading of the book 
um, available with an open use policy. It was supposed to expire the end of June, but now they've extended it through September. So um, again, on our YouTube channel, the link to which is in your monthly newsletter, um, feel free to utilize that uh, early and often. Our magic shows that were con converted to an online format, uh, digitized, um, we've had, I know it's now over 600 views, and so we know that conservatively, we reached at least 12,000 students, kindergarten through fifth grade. And thanks again to Ally Financial for sponsoring. We have nine five-minute segments plus the continuous 45-minute show, um, and we had, um, I think the number was actually over 160, but somewhere between 100 and 55 and 160 educators who registered to use those programs. So, um, you know, when we do these assemblies in person, I think at our peak, we were in front of um, just under 7,000 students. And so um, we didn't know what to expect with, you know, doing a digital version, but um, we feel comfortable in saying that we reached at least 12,000 students. And so that was um, very exciting. So thanks to both of those underwriting partners, Michigan Credit Unions and Ally Financial for making that possible. Our Funding the Future um, events uh, were done uh, online and we had several schools that participated. We reached um, at least 800 students in April, 400 students in February and March. So you know, over 1200 students, um, even with these being done remotely, and we are currently scheduling for the fall. So if you work with middle or high schools that would be interested in bringing Funding the Future artists to their school, and I think we're hoping to do those in person, but we do have the option of doing them remotely. Um, I think some of that is still kind of to be determined, but um, feel free to send me an email if you have a middle or high school that would be interested in hosting a school-wide assembly, either the in-person or the remote version, and I will get you connected with their schedule, um, the scheduler. And so thanks to um, Anthem Advisors and other local Raymond James offices for making that possible because they do underwrite the cost of offering um, this amazing program to our Michigan schools. The Fempreneur Summit took place uh, remotely and it was fine, it was good, but we're excited to say that we're having an outdoor networking event um, in a Northern Oakland County suburb on August 13th. So if you know any female entrepreneurs or small business owners that would like to get plugged in for this, um, that event uh, is kind of an informal networking opportunity on August 13th in person. And then we are seeking sponsors to help underwrite an in-person summit returning to the Vista Tech Center on January 26th. I know it seems crazy that'll be the, <laughs> the dead of winter, but uh, yes, yeah, so that's already on the schedule for January. So email me if you have interest in either the in-person networking um, for August 13th, and I can get you connected with, um, with that or the um, in-person summit that is scheduled for January 26th. And that's myfinancialwellness at gmail.com. So our two uh, uh, MSU extension contests for youth were awesome. We had a lot of good participation. Um, we had 50 students uh, register for the Show Your Money Smarts contest and um, 28 entries for the cash composition essay contest for the younger set. Um, and I am so happy to say that both of the first place prize winners did the smart thing and they chose the thousand dollar contribution to um, MESP and MET accounts for their future education. So they opted not to take the cash prize of, you know, the Show Your Money Smarts contest was $250 cash, you know, in your hand cash now. The cash composition essay contest was $400 because it requires more work. Um, but I'm so happy that uh, the, the first place prize winners um, chose the investment into their future education of $1,000 into those um, MESP and MET accounts. And thanks for 
those organizations for sponsoring this unique program and for sponsoring the Michigan Financial Wellness Network overall. Um, the fact that those young people's made those young people made that choice um, gives me hope, <laughs> I guess, for the future. Um, they're already uh, making wise choices. So, um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, our Oakland County Michigan Works Financial Fitness Initiative, which was formalized this year, although. Um, uh, Oakland County Michigan Works has been a, one of our strong, very strong um, uh, financial wellness partners for years. Um, they've now formalized an ongoing financial fitness series, and um, they have uh, scheduled, you know, approximately two events a week throughout the year. And I know that Linda has been working diligently to get those um, those presenters scheduled. And so anyone interested, again, should have their information in the uh, collaboration Google form so that they can make contact. And thanks to Oakland County Michigan Works for helping to underwrite the Michigan Financial Wellness Network and the work that we're doing year round. So those are just a few of the highlights that I have mentioned before, but I know a lot of folks didn't make it to the last meeting. So I wanted to give just, um, you know, uh, a broad and high level review of some of those major initiatives, knowing that there were, you know, dozens of other um, events and programs that took place. Um, those are just a few of the highlights. So um, with that, I am going to now uh, ask Linda to unmute and um, I'm going to mute myself just in case my crazy dog barks at the UPS man um, or a bird. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Linda. And Linda, I can advance the slide for you. Um, just let me know when you're ready to go. OK, that's fine. And I will share my video with my lovely office, you can see. <laughs> so hi, everyone. I'm Linda Keough, and I am a program coordinator for Oakland County Michigan Works. Oakland County Michigan Works is part of the statewide Michigan Works system and administers workforce development programs that support job seekers and employers. There are six one-stop centers in Oakland County that provide resources like grant-funded programs, internet and computer access, employment-related workshops, and career advisors. Oakland County Michigan Works participated in the annual Money Smart Week initiative since 2012. Financial literacy is a vital part of the resources that we provide to our customers. So when COVID changed the way that Money Smart Week was managed, we saw it as an opportunity to create a year round financial literacy resource for our customers and the Oakland County community. Just before Christmas, it was decided that we would launch this new financial literacy resource called Oakland County Michigan Works Financial Fitness and we were going to launch it on April 1st. So here are the things that I learned in creating and coordinating this new financial literacy program. So first off, <clears throat> we had to come up with a basic plan for how we wanted the program to run. We in the past had done uh, Money Smart Week events during Money Smart Week and normally ran, I think we did 21 to a max of maybe 38 events in one week. So we had a little bit of, ex I had a little bit of experience with trying to come up with that, but we were looking at the broader picture. So we wanted to have a yearly, a year long program. Uh, one of the things we needed to do was to identify all the stakeholders and be sure that our goals aligned. Oakland County Michigan Works is collaborating with Oakland County since the program provides vital resources, not only to our customers, but to the public in general. So in planning, these were the things that we needed to take into consideration. We had to come up with our launch date. So we decided April 1st would be the best time to start because that was financial literacy month. And that helped to give us a timeline. Bear in mind, we decided before, I think it was right after Thanksgiving that they said, okay, we want this to go. And then we had all the holidays. So really we had between right after the new year until April 1st to get this going. Uh, we had to decide on the venue because of COVID, 
everything was being done virtually. And thankfully, we already had a system in place for that because the county was using the Blue Jeans platform, which is similar to a GoToMeeting or Zoom for the presentations. And because Blue Jeans is uh, not as well known as those other applications, we decided we needed to have a moderator from the county at each one of those events. So we do have a facilitator that is there along with the presenter to be sure that everything moves smoothly. The next issue was registration. And because we already had uh, job seeker workshops that were being offered through the Blue Jeans platform, we used Eventbr Eventbrite for the registration process. So that was fairly easy. I was already established. Scheduling, we had to decide how often we were gonna do the presentations, <clears throat> how often we were gonna offer them. So during April, we offered three per week and then decided after that we would offer two per week and see how it went. Uh, and so far it's going okay. <clears throat> uh, marketing and promotion, Oakland County has always been a staunch supporter of Michigan Works and the Oakland County Michigan Works Agency. And they have provided marketing and promotion for many of our programs. And so they stepped up and they're providing all of the marketing and promotion for this <clears throat> program as well. And then lastly, we had to come up with an uh, a name for the initiative. And that took longer than you would think. <laughs> we came up with financial fitness. We didn't want something that was so common. So we did a lot of Googling and we didn't want to step on anybody's toes, but uh, we put the Oakland County Michigan Works financial fitness. And it seemed that that was good because it gave the, uh, the program a little bit of energy. So what did I learn? from the planning process. It was challenging getting all of the necessary information to the various stakeholders. So I created and shared a Google Doc that includes the schedule, of the, schedule the bank of the presenters, and a library of topics. The schedule includes all the pertinent information that the county needs to post the schedule events on their website, which is oakgov.com forward slash financial fitness. So they have created a web page specifically for this initiative with the, the calendar of events. And I encourage you all to check it out. The next uh, major hurdle was finding the financial literacy content providers. Yay, Money Smart Week and Michigan Financial Wellness Network. Thanks to those affiliations, I already had a large network of content providers. So I created a bank of content contacts using Excel. And then I created a letter, which was a call for presenters that explained our program vision and included the ask for them to be presenters and specific details about what that would entail. I also made sure I included a deadline for the response. I feel like the mail merge a document that I created was a must. You can do mail merge emails through Word and that just made it so much easier for me to personalize the communications that I sent out, but at the same time do mass mailings. <laughs> so um, I would encourage you if you don't use mail merge to learn how to use it. As I meet new content providers, I, I add them to the spreadsheet and I send out my call for presenters letter. So what did I learn from that process? Don't hesitate to reach out again periodically to the contacts who do not respond. Initially, when I sent out my call for presenters, I sent it out to, I think it was 52 people that I had in my contact list. I got responses from about 20. So after a month, I sent it out again and I got another, I think eight or 10 who responded. So they either saw it and then set it aside and forgot to go back to it or they missed it for whatever reason. So don't hesitate to send out your communication more than once. I probably will go ahead and send it out again in another month to see if anybody else's uh, schedule has changed and they wanna present. The next topic I wanted to talk about is communication. So my second communication to the presenters requested information necessary to create the library of available content 
which included the presenter's info, the work, uh, workshop title, and the workshop description. To me, it seemed pretty straightforward, the information I was asking for, but I began getting questions from various presenters and it seemed like the same questions were coming. And uh, I was responding to many emails each day with the same information. So I felt like I was wasting time. In retrospect, maybe I was responding too quickly. If I'd waited a few days and collected all the questions and respond to all of them and sent them out to all of the content providers, I probably could have saved myself some time. As I saw a pattern in those questions, I tweaked my initial mail merge communication uh, to the presenters to include that information. So hopefully in the future, I wouldn't have the same issue. Other documents that I needed to create were instructions for presenters and moderators. Again, trying to anticipate all possible questions without it becoming a huge document. That's the challenge with writing instructions, making them clear but concise. So what I learned from this process, <clears throat> most people skim an email or only read the first few lines. So state your business early and be as clear and concise as possible. But remember, no matter how well you plan your communications, there's still gonna be questions. The next uh, topic I wanted to talk about was planning for the unexpected. Murphy's Law says anything that can go wrong will go wrong and you need to plan for that. These were some of the issues that we ran into. Uh, our presenters, because of technology, presenters were dropped either before they started their presentation or during their presentation. And luckily I had the presenter's information and I was the moderator for the first, I think six events. So I got to work out some of the kinks before anyone else stepped in. But I had the presenter's information, contact information was able to call them and we made it work. But the main point was we made sure from that point forward, we had the presenter's contact information on that Google spreadsheet and that the moderator had it available during the presentation. Another issue that we uh, encountered was the presenter, for whatever reason, was unable to get their presentation shared. You saw Kelly was having a little issue with that earlier, and that does happen. So we make sure that the presenters send us a copy of the presentation ahead of time. So both the moderator and the presenter have that. And if needed, the moderator can, can share the presentation, and then the presenter can go ahead and do the presentation. Presenter counts cancellations. Stuff happens and you have to plan for cancellations. So uh, having a cancellation process in place to notify the registrants is important. And again, we were very fortunate because Oakland County already had that system set up through the Eventbrite and I just had to notify them and then they sent out a cancellation to all the registrants. For our first event, we discovered that our registration reminders were not set to correctly go out and we only had two attendees. So now we have registration reminders going out two days before. They get a confirmation when they register. One goes out two days before and then I believe it's two hours before the event, they get another reminder and that after that point of only having two attendees, each event afterwards had 10 to 15, even 20 attendees. So we were sure that it was the issue with the reminders that caused the low attendance. So what I learned from that <clears throat> is that technology issues will happen, get there early and have a backup plan. Originally, I told my presenters, excuse me, <clears throat> Originally, I told my presenters to be there 15 to 20 minutes early, and we decided that 30 minutes early is, is a better practice. Uh, another thing is that they should, you need to practice, practice, practice. Require participants, uh, presenters, require presenters and moderators to practice. And I had many people who were very 
uh, computer or technology savvy who still had issues. So it's practice at least allows you to practice what you do when you have those issues. So we had lots of practices. Plan for the unexpected and have a written process to deal with possible issues. So with a program as big as this is and as many different people who are involved in it, there need to be written processes for pretty much everything. And uh, when I am no longer coordinating the program, the next person who comes along will have all of those processes already in place. So it'll make it easier for the transition. And that will be happening soon. Uh, and then lastly, be flexible and prepared to improvise. So we had, <clears throat> we had one presenter, uh, I think it was Colleen from uh, Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union who was not able to get in at all. She was able to call in, but she couldn't share her screen. And so she had sent me her presentation. She had, we, we put her phone on so that she had the audio and she could speak. I showed the presentation in advance the slides just like Kelly is doing. And she used her laptop to view her presentation. So uh, you just have to make it work whatever way. Okay, so lastly, looking into the future, um, because this is a year long program, we wanna make sure that it's sustainable. So that's, we're still figuring that out. Um, we'll need to create a new excitement for the program about every quarter. So we have roughly three months under our belt right now. Um, and we have had 22 events. We had one that canceled. We've had 238 total attendees. So not counting the canceled event, that's about 11 per event. We wanna to try to maintain that, but we have seen a drop in the attendance just over the last two weeks. And I don't know if that's because of the summer or you know, maybe the people that have been attending are looking for new topics. So we need to, to try to revamp and recreate probably about every quarter, change things up. We may want to reduce the number of weekly events for the summer since the attendance is waning. So we may go down to one per week or even just two per month for the summer. Uh, we got to try to make sure that we're keeping the topics fresh and relevant. We are already getting feedback from attendees that uh, you know, ask them what they think and the topics that they're interested in. So we're hoping that that's going to keep the program focused on their needs. And we're getting feedback from presenters to be sure that they're happy volunteering because without the presenters, we don't have a program. So this program is an ongoing effort. There'll always be people seeking to learn about money. So we must continue to find new ways to make liter financial literacy available, interesting and relevant. Thank you. And um, Kelly, if you show that last slide, it's got my contact information. If uh, anyone is interested in being a presenter or hearing more about the program, please don't hesitate to reach out. Kelly, oh, there it is. Thank you. Yes. Well, Linda, thanks. I took a few notes. Um, so I'm going to, it, it, ask you know open it up to anybody else who has questions to unmute and um can ask questions of linda as well um so uh, um i have a lot of thoughts as you were going through kind of your your journey and um lessons learned and one of those um since you you alluded to what I know is happening with your retirement, I feel comfortable saying that we have <laughs> access to Linda for the next month <laughs> before she, um, you know, passes goes on her. <laughs> what? Before I pass the torch. <laughs> before she passes the torch and moves on to her next adventure. Um, and so I, I'm saying this, you know, somewhat in jest, but I'm very serious that this notion of the, the mail merge for, for email is very intriguing to me and I don't know how to do it. 
And I'm wondering if you'd be willing to give me a tutorial. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> as, a, as just your good Samaritan act. Um, and then yeah. I thought, well, gosh, if I don't know how to do it, I bet there are plenty of other partners who don't know how to do it either. And would you be willing to do if I set up like a little mini, you know, um, informal drop in sort of thing for other people to join if you'd be willing to teach us how to do that? Sure, sure. Yeah, I've had the same thing with um, my moderators and, you know, when they see that we're doing these things. So, yeah, I'd be happy to do that even after I retire. <laughs> well, I'm thinking maybe even you'll, you know, if, if you're willing to talk to us. Um, yeah, Dawn is saying I'd sign up for that tutorial. Yeah, I think I think a few of us would. We're always looking for ways to be more efficient mm -hmm. um, with our time. And, and I, that sounds like something I'd love to learn how to do. So, and the other thing that, um, that Linda has done um, with setting up that Google form which is similar to what I set up for the partner collaboration form, but hers is very specific to what they need for the financial fitness initiative. Right. Um, and so for those organizations that have um, an ongoing program like this or similar to this, you could give me access to your Google form if you have one. So what I'm saying is, Linda set up a Google form with this library of content and the presenter information and a brief description and title of the events, which she gave me access to so that I can go there on a monthly basis and include that information on our collective partner webpage. So right. if, if your organization, I'm saying for the other partners, if your organization had such a Google form or, or some other um, vehicle that you use to organize the information for your financial literacy events, if you are able to give me access to it, then I could go there as I'm updating our website and what that did for Linda, because they had so many events planned, is it prevented her from having to do dual entry, right? So instead of having her own Google form and then having to take all of that information and one by one enter those events into my events form, I said, you know, let me just save you that step. You did a big favor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll go get the information out of your form and add it to our web page from there. So it just made it easier on Linda. So I'm happy to do that. Now, if you're an organization that just has, you know, an episodic event, you know, you're doing things periodically, then I do ask you put them in the Google form because then I can download everything. But if you're an organization that is like, you know, what Linda has created with, you know, two events a week for, you know, all year, then, you know, I'm happy to just, you know, glean the information I need. And of course, I don't, I don't use like the presenters phone numbers and emails and all of that, because that's not what I'm looking for. So I just copy the presenter name, the topic, the title, the date and time, and I put that on the um, on our shared uh, web page. And then from there is where I get the social media stuff. So I just wanted to mention the use usefulness of that Google form. It serves your purposes, Linda, but it also allowed me to take some work off of your plate. Right. And for those who don't know, that is a, it's a private document unless I share it. And if I share it with somebody, only that person has access to it. So, right. Um, and it made it much nicer to be able to, as you said, Oakland County needs all the information for the scheduling. So I don't have to send all that information to them. They can just pull it out whenever they have time. They pull it out. I don't have to worry about, okay, every month they have to send them the schedule. So right. I'm all about easy. <laughs> Real-time access. And then you don't have multiple versions of things floating around. And nobody knows, right. is this the current? Is this not? Is this an old version? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So then I also just wanted to, uh, I guess, um, dovetail with what you're saying about keeping things fresh, right? Keeping things relevant. That is something that you're experiencing with a specific program, but is also 
a relevant conversation for this network as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, so in the past, when we simply had a, an eight day period that we focus on, and then we kind of organically expanded that to a month long uh, campaign, just because Michigan was doing so many things, you know, over 500 events in the month of April, historically, um, as we collectively continue this work throughout the year, we need to think about how do we keep the energy? How do we keep the engagement? And that's for me, two tracks. One is how do I keep partners engaged for a year long thing? And then how do we also keep consumers aware and interested mm -hmm. throughout the year as well? So I'd love to have some dedicated conversation around this whole topic of how do you take something that at one point you know, it was almost like you had this, this build up and build up and build up, and then you had this kind of pinnacle and then everything just went shoo, right. and it went away until you started that process again, the following year. Right. In well, some we, ways it's easier to maintain that energy because people don't get bored of it. It doesn't become wallpaper, background noise, whatever, but it doesn't really meet the need that we all believe is there. So it's kind of a, how do we sustain the energy and engagement when we're asking people now to pay attention all year long, not just toward this buildup of some, you know, like one off. Right. And I, and I think that the county has already got this, had had this plan. They've wanted to every three months or so to have a new, you know, like a social media blast. They're going to have when that first started, they had newspaper articles and interviews, they had social media blasts, they you know, did all kinds of things. They're gonna do that again, but maybe they'll put a summer spin on it. And then maybe they'll put a back to school spin on it. And so they're going to, I think that if, if you maintain it, you talked about trying to maintain that momentum. I think that it, it just becomes generic after a while, you know, if you're just, keep feeding off of what you already had going, it's going to eventually finish. So I think that's just a necessary thing, trying to keep revamping it. Right. Yeah. And, and plus the topics, you know, seasonally and with COVID and everything, the topics are changing all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to um, use this time, instead of breaking us into breakout rooms, I'm going to ask everyone, we're going to do a round table here, and I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves uh, one by one and go around the room so that we know who is here. Um, and since I can see, I can see Maria. Uh, can I ask you to go first, Maria? Tell us, you know, who you are, what your affiliation is, and um, and we'll we're just going to do a, a bit of a roundtable. Um, and you know, certainly after we know who all is here, if you have questions for Linda or for me, for that matter, um, you know, we can we can do that as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Johnson. I am the financial coach for. Mont Community College Workforce and Economic Development List Financial Opportunity Center, that's a mouthful, located in Flint, Michigan. So we are in partnership with LISC and we're in partnership with Michigan Works. And uh, we basically serve anyone within the Genesee County with financial literacy. So um, I work one-on-one -on -one and we provide services as far as workshops, one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, you know, employment assistance. Uh, we're, as I said, we're part of workforce development. So I'm an arm of that. So we also have our, you know, um, educational GED. Um, we have training, you know, in welding and medical and all those kind of things, certifications. So we have all those type of programs and we service everyone in the, within the Genesee County area. 
So Maria, let me ask you a question. I know you're in Genesee County, but with the world being so virtual at this time, mm -hmm. would you be permitted someone from you or your staff, whoever, mm -hmm. someone from your team, would you be permitted to do a presentation, let's say in partnership with Oakland County Michigan Works, that you then could both share with your stakeholders on, in both counties? Um, I'm sure um, we could. I mean, there's, you know, there's no unwritten rule because like I said before we weren't virtual. So we tended to not go outside of, you know, within our county, but um, I'm sure if it was for presentations, I'm always open for it. Um, and I'm sure with, between the Michigan works uh, that, you know, I'm sure that they have some type of collaboration and um, I would assist with whatever collaboration that they had. So yeah, we're open to it. So I'm just thinking that, you know, perhaps there are topics that you have presentations for that Linda may not have in her library um, from the existing presenters that she's worked with over the past few years. And maybe this is a collaboration opportunity where you're already working with the Genesee County, Oakland County or uh, Michigan Works. Mm -hmm. um, but because you're doing things virtually now, perhaps there's an opportunity for an intersection Kind of cross county lines that can yeah. then be shared and promoted with residents of both counties that's true yes and the same thing i'm sure you have you know things that we could utilize and whatever um but yeah we're very open to that yes cool all right dawn i see you next on my screen Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Dawn Pinkham. I'm a career coach at KRESA in Portage, Michigan. Um, we service all of the school districts in Kalamazoo County. There are nine that we work with, and we also work with um, some of the private schools as well. Um, we, my focus is primarily financial literacy, but also career exploration and awareness in K through 12th grades. And um, we are currently located at Carissa and Portage, but we are going to be, because of some realignment um, within the whole programs and um, in different areas and service agencies, we're going to be moving into the YOU, um, which is Youth Opportunities Unlimited Building in Kalamazoo downtown, which um, is also connected to Michigan Works. <laughs> so I've been kind of meeting some of the, the Southwest Kalamazoo area or Southwest Michigan, Michigan works people um, and um, youth opportunities unlimited um, representatives too. So um, like I said, my focus is primarily financial literacy. So I am open for any kind of programming that is available for K through 12th grades and just interested in learning more about what everyone does, so. Cool, yeah, and, and Dawn is, she's she's playing a humble card right now because she also has her Finlit fanatics committee that she's um uh leading over on that uh in that area in Kalamazoo and they're meeting are you still meeting monthly Dawn we are meeting monthly we our last meeting um for the school year is this month and we're going to take two months mm -hmm. off and um yeah so when you're speaking to V you know the you know the build up build up and then the decline I almost kind of thought oh gosh maybe we should get to through July and August and keep, you know, momentum where it's at. Um, but I don't know, I think maybe people need a break too. <laughs> so Right, right. Well, that's kind of how I felt about July when I realized I had a conflict. I can't do the meeting that I had originally scheduled and I'm trying to shoehorn this meeting in. And, you know, even with these, this group, which has been so active in the past, we took the summers off and we took like months off, you know, we didn't meet from uh, May till October in the past. And so I'm thinking, am I trying to shoehorn something in here, trying to find a date that works in July, or should we just, let, let's just take a break. So we're taking July off with this group. So I don't, I don't think there's, I think there's some wisdom in that. Yeah. Um, all right, Amy, you are up on my screen next. Um, hi, I'm Amy from the Millington Arbula District Library, and um, I'm currently the assistant director there. Um, I just kind of hopped on today because I thought it would be good to learn some lessons learned from creating and launching a financial literacy program. Um, we're kind of interested in that, but also um, like some employment aspects as well, like partnering with our Michigan Works. Um, we've also um, looked into um, partnering with our the Michigan State University Extension. They offer some 
um, financial literacy programs as well. Um, we haven't had as much luck with the virtual options, so maybe just kind of trying to plan ahead and see maybe what we could do, hopefully when we can do some things maybe in person as well, but also the flexibility too of the presenter being able to be somewhere else also helps out on that as well. So just kind of testing the waters and kind of seeing what other people are doing. So. So Amy, I'm going to speak on behalf of Linda here and Linda, tell me if I'm wrong, but because things are virtual and, and Linda and I had had this conversation several months ago. Um, Amy, if you were to look at the myfinancialwellness.org programs page, and if you were to look through the events that we have collectively, and you were to say, boy, I think this is a topic, whatever it is, you know, we have a, a topics happening, you know, posted up there from MESP. So if you think, boy, our, our patrons would really be interested in learning about saving for college for their kids or grandkids. Or if you said, boy, this looks like a really good topic and it happens to be um, the host organization could be Oakland County, Michigan Works. Because things are virtual, you could absolutely kind of utilize those programs to serve your patrons. So part of the, the beauty of this network is that you don't have to actually do things on your own, right? You can say, boy, this is a great list of things. I really think this month or this quarter, we wanna leverage these three or four events and we're gonna promote them. We're gonna put them in our newsletter. We're gonna put them on our website, whatever it is that you do, right? However you communicate to your local community because nobody knows that this is someone who happens to be presenting from Ann Arbor or Lansing or Troy or you know whatever. So feel free and Linda, tell me if I'm overstepping, but feel free to look at our program page and pick and choose those things that you want to push out to your community that you think would bring value. Okay. And include them in your own newsletter. I mean, there's no harm and nobody's going to be upset. Like, oh my gosh, they're, they're pretending that they're organizing it and I'm going to be mad now. Like, no, like, no, we just want to help people. We'll take all the free promotion and marketing that you want to offer. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. And, and pick and choose those events that you think would be of most interest to your patrons and your local community. Okay, and great. feel free to put the information, feel free to put the information in your vehicles. You don't have to just direct them to my webpage. Like, I don't care. If you're not directing them to our program page, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, that would be great. You could say, you know, and for more uh, opportunities, you know, go to myfinancialwellness.org. I'd love that. That would be wonderful, but not necessary. All right. So next up, I see, let's see, who do I see in my window? My family squares window. Is it Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn, you're up next. Nope, you're muted. Got to unmute. I can't hear you. I see your beautiful smile, but I don't hear you. Oh, there you go. You. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gwendolyn McCarthy. I work with Department of the Army as a Financial Readiness Program Manager at um, U.S. Army Detroit, um, Michigan. Um, I cover every aspect of financial readiness to include emergency assistance for service members, retirees, veterans, and their family members. Um, COVID has really given us uh, excellent too, which is going from face-to-face -face, um, classes to um, virtual classes. And so um, we've not only had um, soldiers or retirees from Michigan participate in a lot of our classes, but we've had many soldiers from other military communities, including as far as Afghanistan and Germany um, participate in our financial readiness program. Um, Military financial wellness has been an excellent tool that we've utilized for our family members and soldiers here in Michigan. And also, um, Linda, um, Oakland has been very helpful with a lot of our family members and getting employment there. And also we had um, some 
reserve soldiers who are having issues with funds and we referred they live in Oakland so we referred them to the Oakland COVID um, funding that um, Oakland offers so it's really exciting to meet you this morning um, and all your discussion was really great it's something that the military um, encourages encourages us to do so this this is really great I enjoy being a part of this I have missed this being away. I went away in Korea for a four year tour. So I miss seeing all of you and getting engaged in all of this, but it's great to be back. And um, I look forward to more partnership with each and every one of you. Thanks. It's exciting to have you back. I know periodically I would, uh, for those who don't know, periodically I would get an email from Gwendolyn saying, you know, please don't take me off your list. I'm still in Korea, but I'll be back someday. So. <laughs> So welcome back. Thank you, thank you. All right, so next up in my Hollywood squares, I see uh, Takedra. Are you still with us? I see a picture. I don't know if you're there. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just, I'm driving. <laughs> oh, gotcha, okay. I know, it's, it's, it's very strange. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm the um, uh, community engagement librarian at Taylor Community Library. And I, I'm, I'm not, I hope you guys can hear me okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you sound, um, you're, very, you're very clear. I, I hear you very well. Oh, awesome. Um, we're actually, this is, I'm, I'm so glad I did this this morning um, because we're actually starting to plan for our fall um programming we haven't had any programming really um since the pandemic hit <clears throat> um we found early on that our programming our virtual program meaning wasn't doing very well so we kind of you know chilled out on it for the summer and you know throughout the spring and now we're starting to plan for the fall to do some programming so i'm really excited to hear um you know all of these wonderful people <laughs> that we could i could possibly tap for some programs um, in the upcoming the upcoming months here. So yeah, yeah, that's that's me, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and so uh, you know what I shared earlier goes for you as well. So if you're interested in partnering with you know any of the programs that we know are already happening. You know, don't feel like you have to recreate the wheel and don't feel like you have to um, set up your own programs all the time, right? That's the beauty of this kind of collaborative group is if you're interested in doing some things virtually, feel free to jump on to some of the things that we already have scheduled and are already posted. Um, and if anybody is planning to do in-person programming come this fall, Certainly, there are folks within this network that um, that's what they've always done, right, uh, before mm -hmm. this past year. So, um, and Linda, it sounds to me like I've always thought, and you know, Kelly has a dream. Sometimes they're crazy, but I don't think so this time. I think this is not crazy. That just like I have a strategic partnership with MSU Extension, you know, they came up a couple times today especially they have an adult track and they have a youth track. And I know you use them for programming delivery, but clearly because we are a statewide initiative and Michigan Works Agency is statewide, how do we take this really strong partnership that we have with the Oakland County Michigan Works and scale that up, right? And I know that you are passing the torch soon. And maybe this is another conversation with Jennifer again, but it just seems like if, if there is a, a common mission or um, expectation that Michigan Works agencies are doing financial literacy programming year round, I don't, I, it seems to me like we should, we should be, we should have other, um, not just Oakland County at the table. Right, well, each but of- But I don't the, know how to make that- Yeah, each of, and I think you, you realize this, but each of the, um, there are 16 
Michigan Works agencies in the um, in the state, and each one of those agencies works independently under the umbrella of the state. So we plan, you know, we do all of our own planning. We administer many of the same programs throughout the same state, but right. how we administer those and the resources that we offer are all independent. I, um, I mean, I don't know if somebody at the state level, they, they're basically just administrators at the state level, you know, somebody who herds all of the the regions, but each, I think each region individually, and I think you have some contacts from some of the other regions from previous years, you could probably reach out to them and see what they're doing. But I don't, right. I don't know what kind of support. And like you said, Jennifer, who is the manager for Oakland County Michigan Works, Jennifer Llewellyn could possibly direct you to who you'd talk to about that. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it would be just kind of one-on-one -on -one or one-off. Um, there's no turnkey for the whole system. It's, right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Well, we are kind of coming up on the end of our time. Uh, I know that we're a few minutes over and folks have other commitments, but I just don't, I don't want to shorten. This is great dialogue. And um, thanks to Linda for sharing your lessons learned. I knew that it would resonate with people. Um, and thank you so much for your, uh, being my wing wing woman, my wing man, my wing lady <laughs> on a lot of things over the past several years. Um, you've always been one of my go-to people, uh, either with my crazy ideas or trying to overcome challenges. And so I very much value our our partnership and our friendship. And um, you I. will be you will be missed. And I know that you have um, someone lined up to step into your shoes and. Um, I look forward to meeting her and having her part of our group as well. Yeah, I was hoping she would make this meeting, but she must have had something come up. So I'm sure she'll make the next one. Right. Any other any other parting comments or thoughts with anyone? All right. Well, remember, I look forward to seeing everyone in August. August 10th, we are not going to meet in July. Just too many conflicts happening. Um, and my MSU extension people will love this. My daughter is competing at the county fair with her Toggenberg goat. Um, so <laughs> that's the first half of July, um, right after the 4th of July holiday. So um, everyone, you know, send good thoughts Grace's way that she does well competing uh, at the county with her goat. And with that, I'm gonna say everyone enjoy, have a, a marvelous, safe and um, fun-filled July, and I will see everyone back here on August 10th. And then please make sure that the other dates are on your schedule as well. I will send out reminder emails, but um, this way you don't have conflicts September 14, October 7, November 4, and December 8. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.